Happy Sabbath, everyone. In behalf of the Loma Linda Filipino Church, I would like to welcome all of you in our virtual worship this morning. In spite of the fact that we are worshiping at a distance, may we all be blessed as we worship Him in spirit and in truth. For our call to worship this morning, I shall be reading from the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. And the Bible says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you, richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual song, singing with grace your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. May it be that as we worship Him this morning, may we find peace and comfort and rest with our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, and happy Sabbath.
church family. Happy Sabbath. At this time, I invite you to join me in our garden of prayer. Please bow our heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your love and your blessing. We thank you for the freedom we have to worship you on the Sabbath day. At this time, Lord, there's a lot of apprehension, a lot of worry in what's going on around us. Some of us are trying to finish school online. Some of us may be working from home, or some of us may not even have a job. Lord, some of us might be going through some health issues. We ask that you give us the peace of mind as we cling on to your promises that even the birds do not worry about where their next meal comes from. Be with us as we worship you today. Be with us as we sing praises to you and give glory to you in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, dearly beloved members of La Melinda Filipino Church, I am so glad once more to worship with you through this medium. As you know, we are now uh, in the eighth or ninth week of this uh, pandemic, and we are still uh, experiencing this uh, lockdown. We are not able to see each other. Uh, face to face but we thank God for technology that we can still uh, study together uh, through this uh, medium and I hope that as we look forward to the days when we can uh, worship together in person in one place face to face that 
we remain faithful, hopeful that the Lord who has called us and who has promised that He will never leave us nor forsake us is still with us and we still enjoy the assurance of salvation in Him. Today, I have entitled our study with Healing in the House of Mercy. Healing in the House of Mercy. Uh, let us pray as we proceed. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this story in the life of Jesus Christ. The story one Sabbath morning when he visited the temple in Jerusalem and he went to the uh, spot where there were many who were sick, sick from different kinds of diseases and infirmities. And we thank you, Lord, that uh, he has chosen to heal the worst case that Sabbath morning. And we thank you for uh, the uh, encouragement that this will give to all of us that Jesus Christ is still alive and he can still do through his spirit what he has done that Sabbath morning. Be with us, Lord, and guide us as we study your word. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our study is based on the book of John, chapter 5, verses 1 to 14. Let me read the story up to that uh, point in verse uh, 14. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity, 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick Men answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. <clears throat> Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him, who was cured, it is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. He answered them, He who made me well said to me, Take up your bed and walk. Then they asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? But the one who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. So this was a Sabbath morning. Some uh, Bible students say that it must have been uh, the Feast of Trumpets celebrating God's act of creation 
and uh, in this uh, supposed to be festive day there were people at the pool who were sick some of them have been sick for a long long time there were the blind the lame the paralyzed and they were waiting for the moving of the water because they believed that at a, cer at a certain time an angel would come down and stir the water and when the water is stirred anyone who would jump first into the water will get well now there was a certain man who was suffering from an infirmity for 38 years we do not know whether he has been there for the whole 38 years or maybe he was just saving this infirmity for 38 years and then for some time he was brought to that very spot and this man was paralyzed he could not compete with those who were stronger than he was and the longer this man stayed in that spot the more he get more and more hopeless more and more desperate and hope was fading away and maybe fading away quickly Jesus saw him lying there and also Jesus knew that this man had been there or had been in that condition a long time so Jesus Christ had some advanced information about this man maybe he may have learned it from some other people or maybe he knew it as a prophet and as he saw as he spread his eyes surveying that pitiful sight he saw this man with the worst case of all and he walked closer to where the man was and Jesus said to him do you want to be made well what a question to ask a fellow that fellow or that guy was there with only one purpose he wanted to be healed he wanted to get well and he has been there for a long long time and here was Jesus Christ asking him a question but there was something in the voice of Jesus Christ that must have given some rays of hope to this man that this man may be in a position to help him however look at the answer of the man to Jesus and to Jesus question he said to Jesus Christ said sir I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up but while I am coming another steps down before me so this man who was in the presence of Jesus Christ was still hoping that if ever he would be made well it would be by means of his jumping first into the troubled water the pool of Bethesda then Jesus Christ told him please notice here dearly beloved this man was still hoping that if ever he would get well or he would be healed it must be only by means of his jumping into the stirred water while well, that was the focus of his mind Jesus told him 
Rise, take up your bed, and walk. Okay, what was it that this man was not able to do for so many years? He was paralyzed. He could not rise. He could not stand on his feet. But that which he himself could not do by himself, Jesus Christ commanded him to do. It was a command vested with power. The power that Jesus Christ alone can exercise. Rise, take up your bed and walk. And John says, and immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. In our situation today, dearly beloved, we cannot blame men, especially those who are suffering from this coronavirus, those who are already afflicted, and those who are afraid to be afflicted. And I believe some of us may be entertaining fear that any day we may be afflicted. And those who are already suffering, Maybe, and we cannot blame them as I have said, maybe they are hoping that while they are still around, they are still alive, that there will, there will be a vaccine that will be made available so that they will be vaccinated and that they will get well. I, for one, if I would be afflicted with that virus, I will pin my hope on that cure. Just like this man, he had focused his hope to be made well by the only remedy that was known and available to him during that time, especially during that Sabbath day. He did not know that there was a man, or the man, there was the man Jesus Christ, who was there standing where he was, whose power is more potent than the water that they believed would heal. That water, apparently in the belief of the people, could only cure the first person or persons who would jump into the water. And the cure would only be limited to physical restoration of physical health. But this man, this man when Jesus Christ called, told him, Jesus Christ commanded him to rise, take up his bed, and walk, and go home. Jesus Christ restored him to health. He rose to his feet, and he discovered that his muscles became strong, became uh, supple. They obeyed his will and uh, he bent and he took up his mat that has carried him those many years and he's now carrying his mat and he is walking. And Jesus Christ did this on a Sabbath day. And those religious leaders, when they saw him, they became angry. 
They condemned him. They denounced him as one who was violating the Sabbath law as they understood it. It is very interesting to note, dearly beloved, that after this man was healed, he went to the temple. And in the temple, Jesus found him. And Jesus said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. We may ask the question, is there anything worse that may happen to this man than having suffered for 38 years the paralysis of his body? Is there anything more miserable that he could experience than lying on the floor and day after day or every time the water was stirred on the appointed time, he would try to force his body to move into the bank of the pool. Or if there were some caring friends that would carry him to the bank of the pool so that he could jump into the pool or into the stirred water of the pool so that he could get well. Is there anything more? Or will there be anything more miserable experience that this man is going to suffer from than what he had already experienced those long years? What could Jesus have meant when he said to this man, Stop sinning, or else something worse may happen to you. It is true that this man, according to the writings of Ellen White in The Desire of Ages, that uh, this man was personally responsible in bringing himself into this miserable condition, that he did not take full care of his health, he was not careful, he may have gone into some vices, so that he brought upon himself this paralysis that had crippled his whole body. 38 years of suffering. Apparently, even if he still had some parents or brothers and sisters or relatives, apparently, they may have already given them up, given him up. They may have lost all hope or they may have even blamed him for the affliction that he was suffering from. So, is there any? Could you imagine of anything more miserable, anything worse experience that would ever befall upon this man than what he had already been suffering all these years? Is it possible, dearly beloved, that Jesus Christ was saying to this man, my friend, remember, you have suffered this long, this much, but today our paths have crossed. You have met me. I saw you. I healed you. I restored you to health. Please don't go back 
to your life of sin. Because there is a possibility that somewhere along the way, if you choose to go back to your life of sin, our paths may never cross again. And there will be no one to restore you back to your health. So dearly beloved, those of us whom Jesus Christ through the power of his word and through the power of the Holy Spirit whom Jesus Christ had met whom Jesus Christ had healed not only of our physical maladies but may have healed us of our spiritual afflictions our, our spiritual maladies. Let us enjoy. Let us decide to continually enjoy this boon of health, this boon of spiritual and physical health that Jesus Christ has so lavishly bestowed or given upon us and let us abide in him let us cling to him whatever may happen during this pandemic and even beyond let us hear the words of the Lord to this restored paralytic that one morning one Sabbath morning at the pool of Bethesda. My friend, you are well again. Stop sinning or don't go back to your life of sin or something worse may happen to you. Enjoy the bliss, the peace, the comfort, the continuing blessings that Jesus Christ daily provides to us. And instead of deciding to go back to sin, let us continue to decide and to grow in Him, in grace and in knowledge, until one day He will beckon us to enter into His kingdom. May God bless us. May God, God protect us. And may God continue to keep us. And may God give us the strength to follow Him and abide in Him all the way. This is my prayer. Good morning, church family, and happy Sabbath. I hope you're all staying well and in good spirits. We miss each of you. I've been staying connected by reading the 40 days of prayer. And these past few weeks, I've been blessed by this series. This last week, I especially related to King Jehoshaphat's struggles. He was overwhelmed with an impending invasion from a confederacy of armies. He had prepared uh, for such a crisis by building up an army of more than one million well-trained men. However, when the threat became known to the king, his first response was not to look to his own preparations for war, but rather he looked to the Lord. When we face problems in life, our response should be the same. Look to the Lord first. This doesn't mean that we don't do what we can to meet whatever situation arises. The danger is that we have the tendency to go immediately to our human efforts for help and deliverance. Our mind often begins formulating ways to solve the problem instead of turning to God. 
Jehoshaphat's response is a good example for us to follow. He had the right idea. His prayer recorded in 2 Chronicles 20, 6-13 goes, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms? And in thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? If then, when evil cometh upon us, as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house, and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee, in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. Let us turn to God. Today, let us recommit ourselves to God and put Him first. Let us be dependent on you, Lord. Our own power, talents, efforts are nothing without you. God, you are our great provider and protector, a loving and gracious Lord. Lord, please accept our thanksgiving offerings today for what you have done for all of us and continue to do for each of us each day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord keep you and may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious upon you may the Lord make his countenance to shine upon you and give you peace now and forever and until we meet again in Jesus name Amen <music>